ChatGPT just released a couple of brand new models that I wanted to show you in this video. One of them is called O1 Preview. This is their most advanced reasoning model they've ever released. And the second one is called O1 Mini. This is for fast reasoning. But what's unique about these two models is they're designed to reason. A lot more complex questions could be answered using these models. Let me show you a quick preview, then I'll show you them in action here. This just came out about 30 minutes ago as I'm recording this video. Now, here's what's unique about these models compared to every other model ChatGPT has ever released. This model right here is designed to spend more time thinking before they respond, so they could actually reason through complex tasks and solve harder problems than any previous model. They're specifically good at coding and math, which if you've ever used ChatGPT to do any math problems, you know it doesn't do a very good job at all, but this can. Now, as of today, this is available to ChatGPT Plus users and Teams users, and it's available in the API for developers on tier five. Now, here's a really interesting post they put up here on X. So OpenAI thinks before it answers and it could produce long internal chain of thought before responding to users. Chain of thought is a prompting technique. I've been using it for a long time. That's when you try with a prompt to get the model to think before he speaks. This does it internally to try to get through more complex reasoning. Now, they also released this more in-depth article to explain a little bit more about how these models work. But a couple of things that stood out to me that I want to point out here. Here it is on one of our hardest jailbreak tests, GPT-40, which before today was the best reasoning model they had, OpenAI had, scored 22. While our O1 preview model scored 84. So it jumped from a 22 in an 84. And I notice in some of these benchmarks, when it comes to any type of complex programming coding, if it comes to any kind of complex math problems, which LLMs, large language models, generally can't do math very well, this seems to be doing a really good job. Again, this requires a more in-depth test. This is just off their benchmark that they posted on this page right now. Here's another one related to math. GPT-40 solved only 13% of the problems in the specific exam while the reasoning model scored 83%. So another huge giant leap. The coding eval scored in the 89th percentile in a competition. So again, you could read some of these. I just wanna show you this in action a little bit and then I'll do a deeper dive test comparing it to some of the other models in an upcoming video. Okay, I'm gonna jump into ChatGPT and if you click on the models dropdown, you should see two new models if you have the plus plan or if you have the Teams plan. And then again, if you're building your own app with the API, you should have access to both of these right now too. So they moved the older models to a different tab over here. So O1 Preview, that's what we wanna use. That's gonna be their most advanced reasoning model. This is just a faster model that we don't need for this case. We just want the best one right now. And let's start with this very famous one. How many R's are in strawberry? If you've ever seen any test of large language models, a lot of them get this one wrong. So let's see what this one does. And it says thinking, it took a couple of seconds. It contains three instances of letter R. Now I'm gonna give it one of the hardest math questions in the SAT. This is ranked in the top 15 hardest questions in the SAT. You could pause it and look through it here if you like. And that question had multiple choice, so I know the answer already. I'm gonna see what it does here. Let me send it out. You could kind of see, if you open this up, how it's going through that, ensuring accuracy. This is kind of that chain of thought prompting that it's doing in the background, break, breaking down the equation, simplifying, revisiting assumptions. Wow, this is a <laughs> really great chain of thought prompting technique is doing in the background here. Rearranging, isolating, Okay, still going. Again, this is usually collapsed like this, so you don't even see any of that, but if you wanted to see how it's thinking through, this is what it's doing. Okay, here's the answer it gave me in 84 seconds, and again, all the reasoning that he had behind the scenes, you could look through it, and he went through, and he gave me an answer of zero. So, I got it from this website right here, and the answer is actually B, which is negative three. So it did not get it right, but let me try again. This time I'm gonna do it just like in the SAT. I'm gonna actually give it the multiple choice. So it knows the answer can't be zero. That's not one of the options. Let's see if it gets it right this time. It took a very long time, but I'm really pushing it to its limit. I literally picked the top uh, most difficult 
SAT question I could find just to see how far we could push it. Okay, this time it took about 74 seconds. And by the way, if you wanna get good at prompting, you could look underneath the hood here and see how it's breaking down the question and craft a prompt that is this chain of thought prompting that kind of works through it step by step this way and then analyzes its own response before it gives you an answer. Kind of thinks like a human that's trying to, they're trying to design it that way where it just doesn't give you an answer. It tries to reason through that answer. It still works like a normal LLM, but a really interesting prompting technique in the background. And this was a huge answer here. There we go. The answer after six steps is negative three, which is accurate. And I've done this now with three different tests from that question. If I gave it the multiple choice, it seemed to get it right. If I left it open-ended, it seemed to have a problem finding an answer even in 100 seconds, 120 seconds. But these type of answers were just impossible to get out of any large language model. Okay, let me try this fun one here. Which one came first, the chicken or the egg? Let's see how he's kind of analyzing it. It took four seconds. From the evolutionary standpoint, the egg came first. Egg laying animals existed long before the chicken evolved. Okay, and then therefore the egg from which the first chicken hatched existed before the chicken itself. Now let me see the thought process here. So analyzing the origin, I'm exploring the chicken and egg dilemma by looking at biological evolution, piecing it together. This is so interesting. It's kind of, if you could see how it's thinking in the background with ChatGPT, typically does with any model in the background. You just don't get to see how it's doing that. This is letting you look underneath the hood to see how these techniques work in the background. Okay, this time I'm gonna ask it for code, for Python code specifically, for a game of checkers. That's the one I typically could get to some extent out of large language models, but not all the way there. So let's see if we could get it here. Okay, this took about 25 seconds and it's kind of going through the process here and it gave us the code over here. I'll copy that into a text document and I'll run it on my Mac. Okay, this is the very first batch of code that is running this game. Let's see how it works. Okay, that worked well. This is working well. All right, let me just speed run through this to make sure. Wow, it's working perfectly. There is zero issues with this game right here. I've never had on the very first attempt a perfectly working checkers game. Let's try chess. Okay, for the very first time, it also told me exactly where to get these little images here on a website. So I went on this website right here and saved all these images. And then I just made a folder on my desktop here and he walked me through that. And here is the game. Let's see if the game logic works. Okay, so it's telling me which way I can move. This is right, so black's turn and white's turn, that's right. Let's see if this could take that piece. Yep, that could take the piece. Let's see if the knight could work. Oh, the knight does not move, and this is not moving right. This is not letting me move right. Let's see if, okay, so these only move one piece at a time. So the game logic is not exactly right, even though the pawns move correctly, nothing else seems to move correctly. Okay, so it's not quite there yet, but it looks incredible. I've never had a chess game look anything like this when I use any other large language model, but it's still lacking that extra step. So I'll go back and forth and I'll see if I could get a functioning for an upcoming video to see if I get a perfectly working game. Again, this is just the very first code that it wrote for me. I didn't want to do any back and forth. I wanted to see in my first impression what it could do right off the bat. Now, this is not a replacement right now for GPT-40. It is extremely slow, as you could see. This is really meant for complex reasoning, programming, math, things that require it to think before it gives you an answer. So I wouldn't use it for just about everything else I use chat GPT for, anything related to writing, anything related to summarizing content, analyzing content. And right now, it doesn't have any of those functions anyway. So the functions for uploading and analyzing, there is no option for that. Web browsing, there is no option for that. So it looks like this model is just underneath the other model for very specialized tasks that require complex reasoning. And I'm sure they're gonna either blend the two or give this one the functionality of that one and maybe speed up the process in the background a little bit more. So as you could see, some of those math problems took close to 100 seconds to get a reply. 
But again, I'll do a deeper dive video comparing this to the regular ChatGPT and much more testing. I'm in Disney World right now, so I had to get off the ride, run to my hotel to make this quick video to just show you this model the day it came out. But I will catch you on the next video. Thanks for watching.